before we go into the scriptures, let's pray. Just holding my Bible to my heart and saying, Hallelujah. Lord, in between the covers of this book, in these precious scriptures, there is a reality, the reality of your kingdom, the reality of your presence and your glory, the reality of who you are. Lord, I want to come in and enter into this reality. And I long for this reality to have its home in me so that I am living out the reality of the kingdom of God. I am becoming a manifestation of his glory here on earth. And so I ask, Lord, that as we talk about the scriptures today, your Holy Spirit would come. You would open up to us through the spirit of revelation this reality. And you would lead us into the truth, the reality of all that has been made available for us. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, when we were not physically distancing from one, one another, as we gathered together as the house of God, I was teaching on the confidence that we have in prayer, confidence that God is a prayer hearing prayer answering God. At that time, I began with the scripture from Psalm 65, verse 2, that says, O you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. And I said that the human soul has been created for relationship with God, and in the time of trouble, the human soul instinctively turns to God. To O you who hear prayer, to you all men will come. The human soul, in times of trouble, looks to God, looks to the heavens, is longing for some authority, some power beyond themselves who will intervene and who will help. And so God says in Psalms 50, verse 15, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will answer you. I thank God that he is a prayer-hearing, prayer-answering God. There are many idols, there are many gods that the nations of the world turn to, but there is only one true God who hears and answers prayer. You can read for yourself the story of Elijah on the top of Mount Carmel. When Israel had turned their hearts away from God to serve the the idol of Baal. And Elijah called the prophets of Baal, all 400 of them, and he said to them, you build your altar, I'll build mine. You prepare your sacrifice, I'll prepare mine. And then you call on your God, and then I'll call on mine. We don't even have to flip a coin, you go first. We read about how the prophets of Baal from morning until evening did all kinds of contortions self uh, yeah, self mutilation they were dancing and screaming and crying while Elijah from time to time would mock them and say what's the matter is is Baal asleep has he gone on vacation because Baal was not hearing their prayers and answering and then at the time of the evening sacrifice Elijah had his sacrifice completely saturated with water and then he called on the God of heaven. There were no tricks here. The God of heaven answered by fire. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob proved to Israel that he is the God who hears and answers prayer because he heard and answered from heaven. He answered by fire. If our God is not the God who hears and answers prayer, then he is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is not the God of Elijah. He is not the true and the living God. 
as I was teaching on the confidence that we can have with God in prayer, he's a prayer hearing, prayer answering God. There were some who expressed their concern that I might be teaching name it and claim it. I never learned under the doctrine of name it and claim it. I have never promoted name it and claim it. If by name it and claim it, we are talking about coming to God, motivated by earthly affection, our love for the things of the world, or our carnal desires, and seeking somehow to use scriptures to manipulate the hand of God to get whatever it is that we want or we covet. Absolutely not. However, I am not willing to allow the misuse of scriptures. I am not willing to allow that distortion of scriptures to rob the people of God from what it means to have true confidence in God, that he is a prayer-hearing, prayer-answering God. And I believe the scriptures give us every reason to have that confidence. And I believe in this time, having that confidence with God a, and being stirred in our faith, our passion, our focus, our effectiveness in prayer is so absolutely vital. Let me visit again some of the scriptures that I was teaching from at that time. Let's begin with 1 John 5, 14 and 15. Now this is the confidence that we have in him or towards him, towards God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we have asked of him. This scripture is talking about confidence in prayer. Confidence that we have towards God in prayer. Confidence that we have as we come asking of God. Confidence that whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. That confidence, what does it come from? First of all, it comes from him, a confidence that we have in or towards him. Our confidence is in him, okay? that he is a prayer-hearing, prayer-answering God. Let's do another scripture. John 14, 12 to 14. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Again, there's a confidence here that if we ask anything in his name, he will do it. He's saying, I want you to be absolutely assured of this. If you believe in me, if you put your faith in me, the works that I do, you will do also. And you'll do greater works than these because I have gone to my Father. I'm going to be at the Father's right hand. So if you believe in me, that I'm the Son of God, that God sent to the earth, if you believe in me, that the Father was with me and the works that I did was the works that he was doing through me, and now you believe that I'm ascended to the right hand of the Father and that I'm living in you and the works that I have done, you will do even in greater ways. If you believe in me and believe that I am at work in you, Okay, then you are going to ask the Father. Okay, what are you going to be asking the Father? Yeah, any whim that I have? Can I have a new Cadillac? No, you're engaged in heaven's business. You are engaged in doing the works of the Father and destroying the works of the enemy. Whatever it is that you ask in my name so that my Father 
can be glorified through me. Okay? I want you to know whatever it is you ask in my name, I will do it. That's the confidence that Jesus is giving to his church. Another scripture verse, John 15, 7 to 8. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you, will, you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Again, confidence. Confidence. You will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. Okay. What is it that we're asking for? What is it that we desire? It's desires that have been birthed out of our abiding in him and his word, having a home within us. And out of that relationship of intimacy and dependency upon him, and out of that place of his, his word abiding in us and our lives being built upon his word, desires will rise from our hearts. And he says, those desires okay, that come out of that relationship that you have with me are gonna be turned into prayers. And when those desires are turned into prayers, they're going to be answered. Okay? And I want you to know that my Father is glorified. This is the process through which my Father is glorified, that there is a people who are abiding in me and my word has found a home in them who are, who are giving birth to desires. Those desires are giving birth to prayer. They're praying with a confidence before God that he will hear and answer. And God is responding to their prayers by answering. Okay? And the the result of their answered prayer is the fruit that God is looking for and the fruit that brings glory to him. And so he says in John 15, verse 16, you didn't choose me for this, I chose you. And I appointed you that you would go and that you would bear fruit. Okay? I have chosen you for this very purpose. Okay? This is not something that you're doing, acting presumptuously on your part. I actually chose you for this. I chose you. And I appointed you that you would bear fruit in this way and that your fruit would remain so that whatever, and here, here's how it works, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he would give you. I've chosen you for this, that you would be a people of faith that would have confidence in God, that would have a relationship of intimacy and dependency upon me so that out of that relationship okay, with me and Okay. My word abiding in you, desires would give birth, and those birth, those desires would give birth to prayer. And you would pursue in prayer until you see the answers, and when the answers come, they will bear a fruit, okay, and that fruit will bring glory to my Father. This is who you were called to be. You were called to change the garden of this earth and cause it to be fruitful for the glory of God through your confidence that God is a prayer-hearing, prayer-answering God. This is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. If we, had, if we had just a mustard seed of faith that we could actually change this world for the glory of God, that if we were to unite together as the house of prayer, understanding and knowing God's will and having confidence in him with desires that are birthed out of our relationship with him, not out of our, our selfish earthly ambitions, but out of a desire to partner with God. If we were to do that as the ecclesia of God, the ecclesia of Jesus Christ, his citizens here on earth, we could change the face of the earth. Wow. Wow. Let's do another scripture verse, John 16, 23 to 24. In that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. In that day, what day? He's been talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit. There would be a period of time when he would be taken from them and they would go through a period of of sorrow and grief having having lost his presence 
and the world would see him no more, but then suddenly they would see him. He would be with them. Okay? The Holy Spirit would come and he would come to them through the person of the Holy Spirit. Okay? He would be living in them. And he said, in that day, you'll ask me nothing. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be in you. But you're going to ask the Father in my name. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give to you. He says, until you've asked, you, you have asked nothing in my name, but I want you to ask. I want you to ask. <laughs> I want you to ask. Okay? And you will receive so that your joy may be full. There is, a, there is a place of overflowing joy. It's a place of fruitfulness. It's a place where we come to realize that Christ is living in us by his Holy Spirit and moving through us by his Holy Spirit. And because we are in Christ and Christ is in us, we have an access to the Father that no, no generation prior to us has ever had. And we have an access to the throne of grace in every time of need. And we can come and we can ask the Father with a full confidence that when we ask according to his will, out of those desires that are, are birthed out of our relationship and dependence upon the indwelling Christ and our, our love for and, and, and our embracing of his word, those desires, hallelujah, that desire to be a part of his work, our, that faith in Christ, hallelujah, that what he did is exactly what we are called to do. And now that he is living in us, we are called to do greater works than these. That, okay, when we come before God, we are to come asking with a full confidence that our God is a prayer hearing and prayer answering God. And he says, we are going to ask and we are going to receive. And the result is an overflowing joy. We are fulfilling our purpose. We are partnering with heaven through the instrument of prayer. Oh, church, I feel so inadequate to describe this, but I am asking right now that the Holy Spirit who is with me, the anointing that is resting upon me and also with you and resting upon you would begin to activate within you and within me a great confidence, a confidence and a boldness that we need for great faith, faith that would cause us to focus, to have a fervency, to have a confidence so that we would press through and we would unite together to see answered prayer.